Hi there, my name is Sam and in this video we're rebuilding this product section from the Rocks e-commerce brand, including sliders, hover effects and tabs. And this is what I've just built with an instant, all without code and in a matter of minutes. So let's get started. Here we are with an instant and the first thing we're going to do is drag in our base row. Then within this row, under interactive, we will drag in a tabs element. There we have it. Then the main row is selected again and we add some inside spacing. 80 to the top and bottom and 80 to the left and right, as you can see, resulting in space on the left and right and top and bottom between the outer edges of the row and where the content within is placed. Then we select the tabs element and we delete the max width of 600 pixels. So now it will fill up 100% of the space available as you can see right here. This step consists of two items, item one, item two. We're first going to focus on item one. So right here we have item one. Within there's only a text element. So let's delete that text element and then we drag something else within item one. Under interactive, we drag in a carousel element and there we have it. Now let's delete some of the inside spacing that exists on this pre-built element. There we have it. Then we select the content tab and there's also some inside spacing on the left and right, which I don't want. So let's delete that. And for the inside spacing to the top and bottom will remain as is because we do want some spacing to the top and bottom then let's delete the background color of this content layer there we have it and now we see the individual slides then we select the slides and we can set the number of slides that are visible on this viewport let's change that from three to four and there we have it then there are some navigation items we have this navigation with the uh, arrows and then we have the pagination. Let's delete this navigation element. And then we place the pagination controls in the center by changing the distribute property to the center. Now, in this first slide on the left, we will drag in a product card. There we have it. This product card is currently connected to placeholder content. So let's delete that connection for now as we will do something else a bit later then the description we delete it and the add to cart button we will also delete it now we will select the entire item one layer so to say and then we connect this layer to shopify content and to be specific to a collection then we select the bundles collection because I want to showcase all the different bundles so bundles is selected then we go back to this first slide and then we enable the repeat on functionality and then we repeat it on all the collection products from the bundles collections and there we have it all of the bundle products are now within this slider and then also within this tab element now let's customize this one further. The first thing I'm gonna do is delete the background color that exists on this slide. As you will see, it will also edit it for all the other slides, making this a very fast and smooth process. Now there's quite a bit of space between the different elements. There's also a max width on this product card I see right here. So let's delete that and make sure it actually fills up the entire space that is available. Then back at the slides, the current gap is set to 24. The gap is the amount of gap between the different slides. Let's change that to 16 and this already looks better. Now let's change the titles and customize them a bit more to fit the branding of the Papa Tui store. So the title of the product is selected then we go down to the font we search for the ibm plex mono font we change the size to 14 and the weight can be medium there we have it this is looking great then i'm going to select a different property in this case 
case because I want all these letters or the words to be in uppercase. There we have it. Now for the price of this product, we selected it. Now we go to the font, we search for IBM Plex Mono, then this should be size 14 and this can remain bold. What I want to do now is add another text element to the different slides or product cards. And that is the main ingredient that is within each bundle. So under the insert panel, I'm gonna drag in a regular text element above the bundle title. The text element is selected. And then I'm going to connect this to a Shopify meta field to be specific, a product meta field, the ingredients. And as you can see, all the different product bundles now showcase their main ingredient. Let's quickly customize this a little bit more. This can be size 12 and then the font, of course, IBM Plex Mono. And there we have it. If we zoom in a little bit, there's quite some space that exists within this product card. So the product card layer is selected and let's change the gap from 16 to eight. And there we have it. This is already looking way, way better. Now let's take a look at the responsiveness of this section so far. So on desktop, of course it looks good. Then on laptop, it also looks good. On the tablet, there's Definitely some inside spacing active on this viewport. So let's delete it right here. There we have it. And there we have it. And then on mobile, this is also looking good. Only the inside spacing for the entire row is a bit too much. So let's change it to 40 by 40. And now we're done. Back at the main primary viewport, let's customize this a little bit more so what i want to do is also add a hover effect over all of these different slides to do that i will select a image of this first slide then under interactions i will add a new effect and in this case a mouse hover effect then what i want to happen whenever someone hovers over any of these slides or product cards i want the other product image to show in this case product image number two there we have it so now when we preview when we hover over these slides it will show product image number two and that's exactly what we want now let's change the name of this first item item one so we select item one under style, we can change the name to bundles. And then under triggers, we can set the styling for these triggers. So we, of course, select the IBM Plex mono font, size 16, and this is looking good. Now, these triggers, there's also an active interaction. So when you preview whichever item is active, gets this sort of black line underneath which is great but i only want to change the color of the active trigger to do that we select the trigger layer again then under interactions there are some default effects already resulting in these nice hover effects whenever the item is active but for the active one i'm going to change the color of the border from black to this orange color right here and there we have it this first item is now completely customized. So what we can do right now is in the layer panel, we copy the slider, copy. Then we go to the second item. And then we first of all delete the text element. And then we paste in this slider. It looks a bit weird right now, but if we connect item two to a collection, and in this case, not the bundles, but bestseller collection, it looks great right away. And that's the beauty of this repeat on functionality and being able to connect your Shopify collections and work with them right within instant. If we preview, you can also see that the hover animations and everything else is also already there. So item two, what needs to be done? We need to change the text of item two to best sellers 
And there we have it. The product section, including sliders, the tabs element and hover effects and pagination is done and built in a matter of minutes and all without code. And now it's ready to be published to your Shopify store. And that's it for this tutorial. So I hope you have a good understanding on how to accomplish and build something like this yourself and stay tuned for more videos.